Today, we're talking about how we can take images like this and turn them into this. Yes, we're talking about gobos. Now, if you're not sure what a gobo is, let's take a step outside of computer land. And gobos are a piece of metal or glass that lighting people use in front of a spotlight to cast shadows on the wall. Now, that doesn't help us much because we do live in computer land as 3D artists. And a few years ago, when I was trying to incorporate animated gobos into my work, I tried searching for them and I found nothing. So since then, I've come up with a cool system where I can build a unlimited number of gobos that I can use in my projects and I'd like to share with you that system so that you too can build an unlimited number of gobos. So if you're ready, let's jump in. All right, so we are here in Houdini and I have an empty scene here. I just have an empty geo container here so that we can get going quickly. Before we jump in, we are going to use a tool called the Simple Tree Tools. Now this is not free and they are free alternatives that you can use such as the Labs Tree Tools, which are built into Houdini and are free, but they don't have the animation controls that the Simple Tree Tools give, as well as the Simple Tree Tools have a lot of other features that are super, super cool. So I really like using these tools. I've used them for some of my other animations and I found them a really useful toolkit to have in Houdini. But if you don't have them, you can use the Labs Tree Tools. I think Contagma has a tutorial over here where they talk about how you can rig and animate a tree and everything else follows suit with that. So let's jump in and let's start building. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a simple tree. All right, so just like that, I get a tree. Now what's super cool here is you have all these parameters that uh, you can kind of go in and you can change as you would like. And uh, yeah, you can click buttons and move things around. And I don't know what everything does exactly. Um, I just know that you can very easily change stuff quickly as well as there's a whole bunch of presets here. So you can come in and choose different presets. It takes a few seconds to cook and now you have a different preset. So let's maybe just pick any random one. All right, so you can see we have this cool tree over here. Let's maybe go with a bush. All right, so this one looks cool. Um, we will use it and we can also change it as we go if we want to and as i said you can come in here and you can just delete stuff if there's too many branches or you you don't want a certain aspect uh, just deleting that gave me something different and cool so whatever we'll go with that it doesn't really matter for the purpose of this i just kind of want to show you the general base of this and then you can come in and play with the settings yourself if you feel like it so the next thing we're going to use is a tree measure and i'm going to change nothing here i'll just kind of leave everything at default and it just adds a mesh to our branches. And the next thing I wanna do is I want to use a leaf scatter. So the cool thing with the simple tree tools is it has these colorful dots and you know that you just need to connect the colorful dots to the next colorful dot. So it makes it super easy uh, to get it going. And just like that, now we have these cool leaves growing. And I'm not a big fan of this tree to be honest. So I'm gonna just jump in here and change this. Uh, let's try maybe a medium bush. All right, so it's much smaller, but now I have this medium bush. So I think this is a bit easier to kind of play with as well as it's a little bit simpler. So it's a lot faster to deal with. So in this leaf scatter, what I want to do here is use this custom leaves where I don't have one. So I can use a simple leaf. And if you have a look at the simple leaf, this is what it looks like here. Turn off my UVs and it's super, super basic. So you can also bring in a mega scans leaf if you're trying to do something um, very specific and you want a very specific type of leaf, which is what I did over here. But you can also use this and you can kind of change it and uh, make your own profile of leaf however you see fit and you can change the colors and all that for now I'll just kind of leave it at default and plug it in and now we get all these beautiful leaves on our little tree okay so so far if you have a look here we have no animation so getting these to animate uh, it's not working out for us and so what we can do though is we can use a bone deform it's a simple tree bone deform and like I said just plug in the colors so we can see that this is a green one and it says it's the leaves input and if you have a look here we're not seeing anything and that's because it needs something on this side for it to do what it needs to do so we're going to use a simple motion and this is why I love the simple tree tools it makes motion and trees really really simple um, let me just change my Y view shift s and it just changes the way that you see these nodes All right, so what I need to do now is just plug this into there and that into there. And now I have my tree. And you'll notice that I'm missing my leaves. And the reason is that the leaves are a separate input here. So I can just merge my leaves and my branches together. 
shift R to make these the right way around. So now I have both. And now if I move this, you can see I get this very cool motion. Um, if I hit play, it's playing back in real time. I'm not caching this. It's just, and it looks really good. It's not some fake kind of noise. It looks like realistic wind. And you can come in here and you can change um, all sorts of parameters. So you can make it a lot slower and you can change the direction, the speed of the wind. So we can make this, uh, that was too high. So you can kind of see it's got this jiggle and there's a branching time offset. So there's a lot of parameters just built in here that you can play with that gives all sorts of very cool results. Of course, come in here and just break it up with some turbulence. So the next thing I wanna do is I just wanna create a camera and we'll just change this to 1920 by 1080. And let's just maybe give it an 85 millimeter lens. And what we wanna do now is just kind of find a cool angle. So maybe we want this to be quite a zoomed up uh, gobo. Let's turn off the floor. And then what we wanna do here is just add a color node. So you'll see that it's not affecting the leaves. And the reason for this is that they're packed. And so this simple leaf here comes with a color and we can go up here to the color tab and you'll see now it's doing this. So what we can do here is just pull this off and set this color to be white. All right, so now we have a white leaf and if we have a look at our tree now, now everything is looking white and we can turn off our shading. So we just have this. And the other thing I like to do here is do an attribute adjust color. And what I wanna do here is just pump this up so that it is pure white. So it's kind of like overblown and that's because the viewport doesn't really show white properly. Like if you use a color picker, this is definitely gray and I'm not sure why white is not white, but if I just push this to 10, now we know that it's white. All right, so now we have this cool tree and you can see that it's moving and maybe the movement is just a little bit too much. So I can come up here to the speed and just turn it down. So I have the same amount of movement and we can even turn the wind power down. Yeah, so now we just get this like really kind of slow moving tree and we can just flip book this out and just like that, if we flip book this, set the quality to high quality and we don't need all these frames. So let's go to maybe 150 frames and you'll notice that I'm starting on frame 1001. So that's why my frame range is a little bit different. Something I'm gonna exit out of here. I wanna make sure that I'm not in wireframe mode so I don't see the wires and I can try that again. So now we have our gobo that is moving around and you get this really cool movement. So I just wanna show you now with what we've just created in a few minutes, what we can actually do with this. All right, so I set up a little scene over here and basically I just have this room, which is a cube with a cutout kind of window over here. I have a chair sitting inside here as well as a little pot of flowers. So if I jump into my scene camera, this is what we're seeing. In terms of lighting, I just have a general dome light and a light just to light up my hero objects. The main thing we're gonna focus on here is this area gobo light to check out the gobo that we've just created. All right, so I've just added the redshift render view here and we can see this is what we're looking like. So obviously it doesn't look very good. And the first thing I wanna do in this area light that I have here, and just to show you, it's just a giant square that's kind of sticking outside of my box here. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just turn down this spread all the way down to zero. All right, so now we get this really nice kind of harsh shadow that's forming on the chair. Um, it's both really nice and really ugly. It doesn't look really good. One thing we can do here is we can uh, add temperature and color and this just lets me add a little bit of warmth in here. And the next thing we wanna do is we wanna add in our gobo. So what we'll do here is we'll say use texture. So I can jump in here and in my hip file, I can go to render and gobo one. That's what I saved it as and I can grab this gobo. And now I get this, which is the opposite of what I want. So what it's doing now is the tree is white and so it's letting light shine through. And I actually want it to be the opposite. I want the light to be blocked by the tree as it would be casting a shadow, not emitting light. So let's stop this. I'm gonna minimize this window and it's really easy to change this. We can just jump back into our tree and go into our tree camera, turn off this. So this is what we're looking at. So we want this to be black. So I can just set this to black. And obviously now we can't see anything. So let's just create a grid in here and we can set this to be the X plane and we can just rotate it just a little bit, move it backwards. And this doesn't have to be precise because it's not catching any shadows or anything. Use this over here. And we don't actually need this. 
So now we have our backdrop and our flowers. And if we merge these two, our tree, not flowers, now we get this. Something you also notice is that this is very low poly. And so you can also come in here and increase the segments a little bit nicer. So something like that's good. And you can also subdivide the curves if you want to, but I think for now this looks good. So let's quickly flipbook this again and then take a look at what this would look like. All right, so that's been exported. So let's jump back into our scene camera and in this here, instead of it being Gobos 1, let's change it to Gobos 2. And we can hit the open our render view again and hit render. All right, so this is looking really good. Something we may wanna do though is adjust our light. And so if we rotate our light, you see that we get this kind of harsh shadow, which isn't so great. So I don't actually wanna rotate my light, but I do wanna offset this. And the cool thing with using lights like this is we can offset the actual shadows ever so slightly. And maybe we wanna just kind of slide this down. And I'm not going to spend too long playing here, but you get the idea. And something else that's cool with the way that this is set up is you can kind of change the spread of this and you can kind of blur this out. So if you want, you can have just like this really faint foggy background, which um, I really like. And we will maybe just do something like 0 0.008. And you get these really cool animated gobers. Now, if I move forward, we should see that this is now animating and you can see the background is changing. We have these really cool animated gobos. Let's jump back into our tree camera. Okay, so this is what we we have now. Something else that I find really cool is to add in window shutters. And I was trying to find a cool procedural way of doing this that we could easily change this. And I found a pretty cool way, I think. And that's by using the QL camera plane. So what this is going to do is it's going to create, um, if we select our tree camera, it's going to create a grid in front of our camera. So the first thing we wanna do here is we wanna just change this from quadrilaterals to columns. And now we wanna sweep this. And we wanna set this to be ribbon and we can increase the scale of this. And we can also roll this around so that it's facing our camera. So maybe 90, 90 degrees. And you'll see we're getting something weird. And that's because by default, this is creating a really weird normals. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna enable the editing of contents. And I'm going to add in an orient along curve. I'm gonna just drop this in at the top here. And I'm gonna set this to be on the Y axis. And now, just like that, now we have this kind of shutter look that is always facing our camera. And so if we show other objects, you'll see, uh, let's just actually color this as well into black so we can see it on top. You can see now we have kind of these window shutters in front of our tree that will add just an extra layer of kind of coolness to our scene and we can make these smaller. Something else we can do is we can duplicate this whole thing and instead of doing columns, we can do rows. So now we're gonna get the other way. So let's merge these and plug them into color. And the reason that I really love this camera plane is that if we move our camera around, uh, we can't zoom in too much. And if we do zoom in too much, we have this plane distance and this is how far away from the camera it is. So if we jump out, you can see that this is facing the camera, uh, not this camera, but this camera, which is over here. This is how far away it is from the camera. So you can see it moves it further and closer. So if your tree is in front of it or behind it, you can move it to be in the right place, which is super handy. And you can see that uh, these rows now are inverted. So let's just reverse and there we go. Now we have this. And so possibly what we wanna do here is just increase this. So we have a whole lot of them, but maybe they really thin, even more thin like that. And possibly with this one, we want to have fewer, but they are slightly thicker, kind of like the cross beams of a window. And so now we have kind of the same thing, but with the same tree, but with a lot more kind of detail in these windows. So let's just increase this even more. Let's just add in. So before we render this out, let's just uh, get this a little bit thinner. We don't want this too fat. Okay, something like that looks pretty cool. Possibly what we wanna do is actually add in a third one. And so what I mean by that is, let's make this a whole lot less. So we just have two, but then we can duplicate this one. So let's move this over, duplicate this one. We want this one to come in 
the number two. And we want this one to be like so, but we want it to be a lot thinner. And let's just make sure that it's kind of the same. There we go, something like that. This just gives it a slightly different look. So this is kind of one window, two windows, three windows. Okay, and let's render this out. All right, so I have this rendered out. And again, I'm just going to save this, export the sequence. So let's jump back into our scene and let's take a look at how this is looking. So this is what we have now. So let's go grab our window texture and see what that looks like. All right, so um, I had no idea what that would look like. I kind of just uh, went with it and this is the offsets. I've left everything as is. And this kind of, for me, looks pretty realistic. You have this kind of cool window and it's blurred and it looks quite nice. Obviously the actual scene is not very uh, well scaled. This wall needs to be further back and all that. But the point of this is not to make an interior scene, but rather just to how to create an unlimited number of gobos. And I think uh, we can do that super easily with these tools. And of course, as I've said before, we can kind of come back into here and very easily just pick a new tree, zoom backwards and let's just grab a different tree. Maybe we want to do a palm tree. Okay, so now our palm tree is all the way up there. So let's just move it down. So we have it somewhere over there and the leaves are wrong and all that. But if we jump back into our tree camera and we get to the end here, we can scale this whole thing. Let's just transform it. I'm gonna set the pivot to be the center and just scale it down, bring it up. And we would need a whole bunch more leaves, but you can see how easily it is just to create a whole bunch of different random variations of um, gobos that we can use in projects to kind of just give it a little bit more um, interesting flavor and taste. So this is pretty cool. You can see here we have this huge bush now. So if we adjust our camera, we have a bush. And if we want, we can even add in our windows. And now we have a bush with a window covering it up. We don't even have to use the window and we have a bush. So I hope you enjoyed that one and I will see you very soon for another tutorial.